This is Susan Dean, and this is a special session on the TI-83 calculator, calculator, uh, calculator instructions. Um, I'll be going through the calculator instructions that you have. You either have them in your book or you have them in a special packet that you would have bought in the bookstore. So without uh, wasting any time, we'll get started on these TI-83 calculator instructions for statistics, Math 10, at De Anza College. Um, please turn to your calculator instructions, if, whether they're in the book or whether you have them in the packet. The packet is an update of the book instructions. Um, the first page is page 550, and it tells you how to do some general things on your calculator. It tells you how to adjust the contrast. In other words, make it lighter and darker. Uh, it tells you how to clear. It gives you some information about uh, scientific notation. Uh, it tells you also how to transfer programs. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at how to lighten and darken your calculator screen. All right, so if you look at your calculator uh, keypad, you will see a, um, a key that says second, all right, that says second. And you want to press that second key. And then you'll see an up arrow key. And you'll want to press that up arrow key. And when you do that, uh, you should, after you, turn, well, after you turn the calculator on, press second and up arrow. The screen should get really dark, very dark. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you press second, let it go, and press the down arrow key, the screen lightens. Let's try that again. Press the second key and press the, and let it go, and see, you see, you see a little arrow, and then press the up arrow key and hold it. The contrast gets darker, and you'll notice that there was a number that appeared up here. All right, I always tell everybody when that number gets up to eight or nine and your screen is light still, change the batteries. And when you change the batteries, make sure you turn the calculator off, all right? That's so that any equations or programs you put into the calculator will not be lost. All right, so let's try to lighten this again. Press the second key, let it go, press the down arrow key, and it lightens. That contrast looks good. I hope that looks good on TV to you. That's how you lighten and darken the screen. Now, if you would like to enter uh, a letter, what you do is you press the teal green alpha key, let it go, and then find the letter A. It's above the word math, and you enter an A. All right, if you want to enter the letter B right next to A, press the alpha teal key, let it go, and notice that the cursor has an A in it to tell you you're in alpha mode, and then press B, which is above the word matrix. And that way you can enter um, letters. All right, now, press clear. Suppose you want to enter a string of letters, a bunch of letters all at once, and you, you don't want to keep hitting alpha. Press the second key, let it go, press the alpha key, and then let's enter A, B, C. So A, B, C. And notice that the cursor still is in alpha mode. All right, to turn that off, just press alpha again, and it turns that off, and we're in regular calculating mode. Anyway, that's some helpful hints in, in doing that kind of thing. All right, if you do something wrong, usually you can press the clear key and clear everything out, and it's just fine. All right, now, let's look at page 551 in your calculator instructions, page 551. All right, page 551 allows you to enter data. And I'm looking at the calculator instructions also right along with you. We just do this all together. It's a lot easier. All right, so on page 551, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to enter data, and we're going to learn how to create a histogram and a box plot. All right, a couple of different ways. One of the ways will be in the, cal in the instructions, and the other way I'll just show you afterwards, all right? So if we're following the instructions, if we're following the instructions, let's look at those a little bit up on the screen, up on the Elmo. These are the calculator instructions you have, just like I have. Over here, it says press. These are the keys to press. Over here, it says what happens when you press that key. 
See, press on, turns on the calculator. Press stat, accesses statistics mode. All right, so this is the key, and this is this function, and that's what we're going to be following. This is page 551. So let's go back to the calculator. Here. All right, so it says press on. Mine's turned on. If you haven't pressed on, press on again. And then press STAT, S-T-A-T, the S-T-A-T key. That key is next to, you'll see it next to those arrow keys to the left. S-T-A-T, -T, it's in the second row of keys. So just press that. All right, then it says, it says access the statistics mode. Then it says press down arrow three times. So we're going to press down arrow three times, and we're going to get to clear list. Now we could have entered the number four. We're right now in edit mode. Notice that the edit, edit is in what we call inverse video. So we're in edit mode. All right, and we have for edit mode, we have these menu items. So we either wanted to arrow down to four or we could have entered four. All right, now that I've arrowed down to four, I'm going to press enter and I'm going to clear some of the lists that I'm going to put data in. It says second L1, enter. All right, second L1, enter. So I'll press second and if you look at your keypad, the L1 is a yellow key, yellow above the 1 key. So find the 1 and you see L1, and so you want to press 2nd L1, and then enter. That cleared the L1 list of numbers. Then it says press 2nd Entry. All right, if you look at the Enter key, you will see the word Entry above the Enter key. Enter is down on the lower right-hand corner. So press second and then entry. And then what you want to do is you want to arrow back and then press second L2. And the L2 is above the two key. Find two and you'll see L2 above it. So second L2. And then you press enter. And you can clear the list. And there's easier ways to clear the list also and I'll show you those as we go along today. But that's using the clear list key. All right, now what we want to do, again, we're about a third of the way down the page, we want to press stat again. So we'll press stat. And notice we're in edit mode and the first item in this menu is edit. So all we're going to do is enter the enter key, press the enter key. So press enter. And notice that the L1 and L2 lists, these are lists, are clear. L3 has numbers in it that I have, but it doesn't matter. All right, we're going to arrow over to the L1 list. So let's arrow over. And then what we're going to do is enter the data in L1, and then when we're done with that, we'll enter the frequency in L2. Uh, the data and the frequency are at the top of page 551. So let's do that. And each time we enter a data value or a frequency, we'll press the enter key or the down arrow. It doesn't matter. So the first data value is negative 2. And you need to use the negative that's at the bottom of the screen. It's next to the enter key. So right down at the bottom row, you'll see a negative sign in parentheses. That's to make negative numbers. So press negative 2. All right, and then you can press enter or you can use the down arrow key. Then negative one, and then enter. And then zero, enter. One, enter. Three, enter. And that is all the data. All right, now we want to enter the frequencies in list L2. So just push the right arrow over to L2, and now we'll enter the frequencies. So it's 10, enter. Three, enter. Four, enter. 5, enter, 8, enter. Now we have the data in list L1 and the frequencies in list L2. All right? Now just a little extra here. Suppose you would like to clear a list right in the calculator at this point. Let me clear out list L3 and show you how easily it is to clear out a list when you're in editing mode. All right, I'm in list L3. 
So I arrow up to the L3. I just arrow up to the L3 and I press clear. All right, now if I arrow down to L3, it's all gone. That's an easy way to clear out lists. And th that is not in the calculator instructions, so I just wanted to let you know it. All right, now after we've entered all the data, um, what we're going to do is press STAT again. We're about two-thirds of the way down on page 551. So we'll press STAT. And, and then we want to press the right arrow to access the calculator menu, calc menu. All right, this lets us calculate a sample mean and a sample standard deviation and the first and third quartile and the median and that sort of thing. It gives us a lot of information. This is the information we study in the first part of the course. So we arrowed over to Calc, and what we're going to want to do is press Enter for one variable statistics. Notice that one is highlighted, so if we press Enter, we will do what's called one variable statistics, which means we'll calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation and that sort of thing. So let's press Enter. And now what we have to do is we have to tell it which lists our data and our frequencies come from. All right, what we'll want to do is put a left parenthesis and put second L1, a comma, and second L2, and a right parenthesis. The parentheses are about the middle of the keypad. You'll see an X squared key and then a comma, and then you'll see a left parenthesis and a right parenthesis and then a division symbol. So you just want to press the parentheses, second L1, comma, second L2, and then a right parentheses. All right, now, if we, when we do that, we'll press Enter, and we have calculated the sample mean, which is 0.2, and there's some other values, just so you're, you're familiar with them. If I were to sum up the data, I would get the value 6. In other words, negative 2 plus 1 plus 1, plus 3, uh, multiplied by their frequencies, I would have to take negative 2 times 10, negative 1 times 3, 0 times 4, 1 times 5, 3 times 8, those products, and sum them up, and I would get um, 6 when I did that. Remember, there are many more values than just the, the 5 you see there, because the frequencies are bigger than 1. All right, so that's the sum of all the data. Then if I were to take the data, each of the data, and square it and sum those, I would get 120. We don't use these too often, these values, because we have the power of the calculator. Those values are often used when you have to do formulas by hand. We're interested in the X bar, which is the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation, particularly at the beginning of the course. So this is the sample standard deviation, this S with an X. You often see it just written as an S. All right, now, if this set of data had been a population, we would have used the population standard deviation, which is this value. All right, now, if you go down another line, you'll see an arrow here, which means there's more information. N equals 30 means that's the number of values we entered. We actually entered 30 values, some repeated. Now, if you press the down arrow key, You'll see the minimum value of the data, min x. You'll see the first quartile. You'll see the median, the third quartile, the maximum value of the data, x. And you have, you're done. All right, there's no more arrowing down. You can arrow back up again. Anyway, that gives you a lot of information. All right, so turning to the next page, page 552 in the instructions. I'm going to, we're going to try to draw histograms. And we will assume that the data is already entered, and we will construct a histogram with the built-in function called statplot. Okay, so I'm on page 552 in the calculator instructions. So what we want to do is press second statplot. All right, statplot is just one of the, it's a second key that's just under the viewing window. You'll see a y equals. And underneath that is stat, uh, above that is stat plot. So press second stat plot. And you'll see stat plots uh, on your screen, all right, and on the Elmo. 
All right, so it says here that what we want to do is press enter to select plot one to ex access plotting the first graph. All right, so actually before we do that, before we do that first instruction, I always tell everybody to press four to turn all the plots off so that there, some of your plots might be turned on, all three of them might be turned on and they can interfere one with the other when you try to graph. So if you press the four first, if you just press four for plots off and enter, then you turn all the plots off. So now let's do second stat plot again. And now we'll follow the instructions. We're going to press 1 or press enter for plot 1. And notice it's turned off. And so what we want to do is we want to arrow over to on if we're not arrowed over there. And notice the cursor is blinking on the on. All right, so you have to arrow to it if you're not there. And then press enter and now the cursor is blinking on on, the plot one is turned on, and all the other plots are turned off because we told it to do that. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to arrow over, as it says in the instructions, to the little diagram that looks like a histogram, and that's the third one in this first row of type. So arrow over to that picture, which is a histogram, and press Enter and then arrow down to X list and if it is not L1 enter second L1 and I'll just do it second L1 then arrow down to frequency and that must be L2 so press second L2 if it's not already in L2 so the data will come from the X list and the frequencies will come from L2 for this stat plot all right, now we're going to do something that we can easily do. We're going to set the window for the plot. You know, when you draw a graph on a piece of paper, you have to scale the X and Y axes. We do the same thing here, except we use the window key. So window is one of the keys that's right below the viewing screen. It's the second key. So press window. All right, now it gives us instructions on page 552 of how we should set the window. All right, we're going to set the minimum x to negative 2.5. We're setting it below the minimum x in the data so that we see the full picture. We're going to set the maximum x to 3.5. And to get to max, x max, just arrow down or hit enter. We're going to set x SCL, which is x scale, to 1. And that's going to give me the width of the bars equal to 1. And we're going to set y min to 0, which is less than the smallest frequency and Y max to 10, and Y scale to 1. That's spacing of tick marks on the Y axis, and the resolution to 1. There's an instruction that says, be sure to deselect or clear all equations before graphing. To deselect equations, I'm reading from the instructions, uh, what you do is you arrow over to the equal sign and press Enter. So to do this, you need to press the Y equals key, which is just below the viewing screen. So press Y equals. And you'll notice that I have a bunch of instructions in there. Now suppose, let me just, suppose I had come onto the screen and it looked like that. That equation is now selected to graph, and it would interfere with the graph of my histogram. So what I want to do in order to turn the graphing mode off for this equation is have the, arrow, have the cursor on the equal sign and then press enter. All right, and so now if I arrow down, I've turned that off. Now if I look at the rest of my equations here, none of them have the little black blinking box on the equal sign. So all my equations that I'm, I have here are turned off. All right, in other words, they will not graph. Now I must do that or I'm going to interfere with my histogram. All right, so now what I want to do is turn over uh, to the next page, uh, or not yet. What I want to do is I want to actually draw the histogram. So in order to draw the histogram, what I have to do is I have to now do graph, all right? 
So I've set the window, I've cleared plots out, so let's press graph at this point. Okay? So graph gives me this nice histogram. This very nice histogram. Now, if I should not want to, to do the window, all right, and I don't have to, remember we set up the window for the, scaling the x and y axis. In other words, we set this, by pressing window, we set this minimum y to, let's see, negative 2.5 and this maximum y to 3.5 and we have the width of our bar is equal to 1 and we set y max equal to 0 and I'm sorry y minimum equal to 0 and y max equal to 10 up here so we scale the x and y axis well sometimes it's it's difficult students find it difficult to um, set the window and there's another option though it's not on these calculator instructions for you to create the histogram so here's what you do look at the very top uh, row of your calculator instructions where, that starts with y equals and you will see this key zoom z-o-o-m so press zoom alright so you should see on your calculator and on the Elmo uh, the zoom menu alright the zoom menu okay now what you're going to want to do is arrow down now just arrow down until you see zoom stat number nine you could also press 9 once you know zoom stat is what you want. Now what this key will do is it will take your histogram and it will scale it automatically for you. You do not need to do the window ahead of time. You do not need to do the window ahead of time. So you can just press 9 or press now enter for zoom stat and it would create the histogram in a nice way. Notice it changed a little bit, but it, this is an automatic scaling. Zoom stat, which is in Zoom, can do this for you. And it made a very nice histogram, but it is an automatic scaling. So when you do the window, your histogram might look a little differently. But sometimes this is easier. All right. So now let's go over to page 553. And what we will do is we will do box plots. It says to draw box plots. So what we'll do is we'll press second stat plot, like it says, we're on page 553. So press second stat plot. And you'll see again stat plots at the top. And we have plot number one turned on. Everything else is turned off. All right, so we're going to press one plot one. If we press one or we hit enter, we will get that. And as the instructions say, arrow over to the box plot. All right, the box plot picture. Okay, so let's arrow over and we'll arrow over, I'm sorry, to this. I'm pressing the right arrow key here. I'm going to do the, the second, what looks like a box plot, the one that has the line down the middle of it. That line indicates the median. All right, now press enter to enter that. And now we're going to activate the box plot plot. Notice the histogram was turned off. In other words, there's no more a cursor on it. All right, now make sure X list is L1 and, and Y list, our frequency is L2, which they are. So if you don't have L1 there, press second L1 to enter it. And then go down to where it says frequency. And if you don't have L2, press second L2. So that will give you access to L1 and L2 in order to draw the box plot. All right, now it says in the instructions to press second stat plot and turn the plots off. So let's do it again just to review. All right, so second stat plot. And you could turn the rest of the plots off, uh, plot two and plot three if you wanted to, but we have already done that. All right, so remember when you're wanting to plot, to make sure you have other plots turned off except the one you want to plot. We're plotting plot one. All right, and remember also, if you look in these instructions, 553, you want to press the Y equals keys and make sure that uh, none of the equations are turned on to plot. You have to make sure to do that, but we've already done that. All right, so that's how, now we want to create the histogram at this point, so let's press graph 
and there's the histogram. That's our uh, histogram. Sorry, that's our box plot. We have a box plot at this point. So these are fairly easy to, to do, aren't they? So you just have to set the window or use zoom stat and then press graph after you've entered the data in the frequencies in list L1 and L2. All right, so that is how you plot box plots and histograms. Nice feature of the calculator. Now, if you turn to page 554 in the calculator instructions, you will see binomial distribution. This is one of the distributions we study during this course. And I'm just going to teach you how to calculate binomial probabilities um, looking at these instructions. This example is a binomial distribution in which the number of trials n is 6 and the probability of a success on any given trial is 0.45. All right, so uh, I'm going to clear out my screen right now. And you can do the same. Just clear everything out. Um, and I'm going to uh, do these instructions. Now, it says, if you haven't turned the calculator on, turn it on, and then hit second stat plot. So we'll hit second stat plot, and it says, before accessing this pro program, be sure to turn off all plots to access graphing mode. All right, let's just press 4 for plots off and enter, and it turns the plots off. All right, and the next thing to do is to press mode, and if you look at your keypad, Mode is right next to the second key, so press Mode. And what we want to do is we want to set the number of decimals to 4. So if yours are not set to 4, just arrow down and then to where it says Float, and then arrow over to where it says 4, and press Enter. And you have now set the number of decimals for probability problems to 4. Then the next thing to do is to press second distribution, second D-I-S-T-R. Now, if you look at your keypad, if you see the word clear, next to it is the word VARS, and above that is D-I-S-T-R. So distribution or distribu distribute is a second key above VARS. So press second distribution, and now you're in the probability distributions menu. And you can do two things in here. You can calculate probabilities and you can draw the, the, uh, the pictures of some of them, not all of them. So now what we want to do is we want to arrow down. Oh, we don't want to arrow down. Yes, we do. We want to arrow down to where it says binomial. All right, so there's the normal. Two is a normal CDF. Those two are normals, which we study later on. And then we go through the T and chi-square, just to look at it. And then we go to the F. And then finally, the binomial, notice PDF. Now, what the binomial PDF will do is it will calculate individual probabilities for the binomial distribution. So let's do that. So now let's press Enter. And we have the binomial PDF. And we'll do what it says. And it says, enter 6. So let's press 6 for the number of trials. And a comma. And then enter 0.45 in that order. The order is important. And then press a right parenthesis. Then press Enter. And what we get is a series of probabilities. 0.0277 is the probability that x is 0. 0.1359 is the probability that x is 1. 0.2780 is the probability that x equals 2, and so on. All the way up to the last probability, well, let me arrow over there, 0 0.0083, which is the probability <coughs> that x is 6. Remember, we put in n equals 6. Now, let's do second distribution again. Actually, I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to press the clear key so the screen is clear. And let's do second distribution again, as it says at the bottom of the page, and then go to the next page in the calculator instructions, which is page 555. And we're going to do cumulative probabilities. And that's option A, but let's arrow down to it. 
we could enter alpha A, but it's easy just to arrow down. This says binomial CDF. These are cumulative probabilities, probabilities that x is less than or equal to a value. All right, now we're going to press enter, and now we're going to put in the 6, the comma, and the 0.45, and the right parentheses. And what we get is the probability that x is less than or equal to 0. That's 0.0277. The probability that x is less than or equal to 1. That's 0.1636. The probability that x is less than or equal to 2, 0.4415, and so on. All right, now, suppose we want to adjust the probability that x was equal to 1. We just want the single probability that x was less than or equal to 1. The way we do that is we do second distribution, arrow down to binomial CDF, the A option, press enter, enter 6, comma, 0.45, and then put in comma 1 and a right parentheses. That will give you the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. Press enter. And there's that value. This gives you the individual cumulative probabilities. All right, so going on, we will skip page 556, which is the geometric distribution. And we'll go on to page 557, which is the Poisson distribution. So we're on page 557, Poisson distribution. And our example here is P of 0 0.9. The mean of the Poisson here is going to be 0 0.9. All right, let's clear the calculator screen off. Or if you're just joining us, please turn your calculator on and clear it out. So I'm on page 557. All right, we'll hit second stat plot and make sure all plots are turned off. So we would press 4 to turn all plots off as the instructions say, and then we could press mode. If you're just joining us, you'll want to do that. Arrow down to float, arrow over to the 4, press enter, and now we are have set the number of decimals to 4. Now the next step is to press second distribution, and again the distribution key is above vars, vars is next to the clear key. So find the VARS key and press second distribution. And what we want to do is we want to arrow down to the Poisson PDF. So let's arrow down to where it says Poisson PDF. That's option B. And then we'll press enter. And all we need to now put in is that mean 0.9. And we'll put in a comma 5. And what that's going to give us is the probability that the Poisson distribution, the x value for the Poisson distribution, the x value is equal to 5. It gives us an individual probability. So that's, that's the probability that x is equal to 5. Now the next instruction says, let's find cumulative probabilities. So press second distribution, and we're going to arrow down to Poisson CDF, and that's option C, Poisson CDF. Press enter, press point 0.9, press comma, press 5, and the right parentheses, and then press enter. And what we get is the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. In other words, the probability that x equals 0 plus the probability that x equals 1 plus the probability that x equals 2 plus the probability that x equals 3 plus the probability that x equals 4 plus the probability that x equals 5. Probability of x less than or equal to 5. That's a cumulative prob Poisson probability. All right, now we're going to kind of switch gears and, and get out of the, the instructions for discrete probabilities, the Poisson and the, nor, uh, the 
binomial are bo both called discrete probabilities and go on to page 558 in the instructions and do the normal distribution. Page 558. All right, I'm going to clear my screen out. If you're just joining us, please turn your calculator on and clear out your screen. And we have several examples here. Example 1 on page 558 has us do the probability that z, a z-score, is less than negative 1. Example 2 has the probability that x is greater than 12. And example 3 has the probability that x is between 6 and 11. And example 2 and 3 use the normal distribution where the mean is 10 and the variance is 4, standard deviation is 2. And example 1 uses the standard normal distribution. So if we have our calculators on, we would want to hit second stat plot and 4 to turn the plots off. And then we could do mode again. Go down to float, go over to 4, press enter, and then we'll clear the screen out. And I'll clear everything out. All right, now we, we're trying to figure out, we're going to do example 1, probability that z is less than negative 1 given the standard normal distribution where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Press second distribution. Remember, distribution is above the VARS key. Distribution is a second key. Press second distribution. And we're going to arrow down to normal CDF, like it says in the instructions, and press Enter. Press Enter for normal CDF. That was option two. And it says, note, the default parameters are mu equals zero and sigma equals one. Default means I do not need to enter them. So you watch me here not enter mu equals zero and sigma equals one. All right, so we want to calculate the probability that z is less than negative 1. And so we need a range of values, so we need to put in a very small number here. So we'll put in negative 1, and we need to access the EE key. That's a second key above the comma, so find the comma. All right, it's about the middle of the keypad, and press second EE and then 99. This number is negative 10 to the 99th power. It's a very, very small number. And then we need to put comma and negative 1. And remember, we're using the negative that's down at the bottom of the keypad next to enter, negative 1. All right, then we'll put a comma in. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't need the comma. All we need to do is put a right parenthesis. I, so if you put the comma in, just press the left arrow and move over on top of the comma and press the right parenthesis. All right, now, this normal CDF calculation is assuming mu equals 0 and sigma equals 1. Okay, let's press Enter. And we get 0.1587 for the first probability. The probability that z is less than negative 1 is 0.1587. All right, I'm going to leave this one up here. All right, I'm not going to clear it. I want you to see the next normal CDF, compare it to this one. All right, so now we're about two-thirds of the way down in the page, and we want to do example 2, which says the probability that x is greater than 12. So let's press second distribution, like it says. And we're going to press 2 for normal CDF. And now what we have to do is enter 12. And x is going to be a value greater than 12, so we'll put a comma. And now we have to put a very large number for this normal CDF. And so we'll put in 1, second EE, 99. And that's 10 to the 99. That's very big. Now, since we're not using the standard normal, but we have a mean of 10, and a variance of 4, which means a standard deviation for 2, we need to put the mean and standard deviation here for this distribution. So put a comma, put the mean 10, put a comma, and put the standard deviation of 2, and put a right parenthesis. 
These are not default values. The 0 and 1 are default values. And press Enter. And so now we get the same probability, 0.1587, but it's for a different normal distribution. And I wanted you to see the two calculations up on the screen. All right, let's go over to page 559. And now we're going to find probabilities by graphing. Probabilities by graphing. We're on page 559. And so the first thing we have to do is we have to clear out any drawings that might be in our calculator. And so we want to press second draw. All right, second draw is a, right in the middle of the third row of the key bat, pad. Find the key PRGM, and you'll see the word draw above it. So press second draw, and then if you press 1 or the uh, enter key, you clear out all drawings. Now let's press clear so we have a clear screen here. Now, we're going to press second distribution, and we're going to arrow to the right to draw. And we have several menu items here. We can shade the normal, shade the T, shade chi-square, and shade F. We want to shade the normal distribution. So press 1 or enter. Now we have to, what we want to do is we want to show the area on the normal curve where the probability of X is greater than 12. We want to shade that area where the distribution is n of 10, comma 4. In other words, the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is 2. So what we're going to do is the same thing we just got through doing. We'll press 12. We'll press comma. We'll press 1, second EE, 99. We'll put in much the same thing. We'll put comma 10 comma, 2, the mean and the standard deviation, and then we'll press enter, uh, right parentheses and enter. And so it's going to draw us a very nice curve. Well, it didn't draw us a very nice curve because I forgot to set the window, which is very typical. If you look at page 559, I completely forgot to set the window. So go up to where it says window. This happens all the time. Whether I had done this by accident or on purpose, I would have done one by pur in purpose anyway because this happens all the time. So let's go back and press window. Window is at the top of the screen. And we have to set the window here so that we can see this, this graph. So let's press 4, as it says in the instructions. And let's make x max 20. And then we'll make x scale 1. And we'll make y min negative 0.05. So we have to set the viewing window so that we can see this particular distribution. Make y at max 0.2. Make y scale 1 and leave the resolution at 1. So now we have the menu, the, the window set, so that we can see our shading and our graph. So let's go back, do second distribution, um, and draw, arrow over to draw. Do 1 for shade normal. And now we'll put in. 12, comma, 1, second EE, 99, comma, 10, comma, 2 for the standard deviation. Do what we just got through doing. And now let's press Enter. Now we'll draw a very nice graph. All right, so if you happen to do this, like I did, and don't see the graph, don't panic, you probably have to set the window. All right, you have to go back and set the window in. The window takes some thought. Now, you'll notice that the mean of this um, distribution was 10, and the mean of the normal is right in the middle here. So I need to go below the mean for y min and above the mean for y max. And the area under the curve is 1 maximum. All right, so I probably I will not want to go make y max any bigger than um, 1. In fact, I probably will want to make it smaller. In this case, I made it 0.2. So y max will not want, you will not want to make it any bigger than 1. And y min, I didn't make 0, but I made it something smaller than 0 so that this writing could be produced under the graph. See, y min, I made negative 0.5. If you make it 0, the writing's going to occur over the graph. You'll find this out by experimenting. 
All right, so this is now our shaded region, 0.1587, right here. This does a really nice job, this 85, 83 calculator. All right, let's go on to page 560. On page 560, we're going to calculate the probability that x is between 6 and 11, and we're going to do it in a drawing. Because in the drawing, you'll, you'll notice that you also get the calculated probability. You, you get a lot of information. So what we'll do first is we'll press second draw, second draw like it says, and we'll press 1 to clear that drawing we just did out, and let's press the clear key. And let's press the clear key a second time to clear everything out. Let's press second distribution, and now I don't need to reset the window because my window is for this particular distribution where the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is 2. I've already set that, all right? So now what I'll do is I will um, access over to draw. And reminder again, I've already set the window, all right? The window has already been set. And I'll press 1 for shade normal. And I'm going to put in a lower bound of 6 this time a comma, an upper bound of 11, meaning I'm going to shade between x equals 6 and x equals 11. And then I need to put in the mean, comma, the standard deviation, 2, and a right parentheses. And I'm going to press Enter. And it's going to draw that nice graph again. And remember, I had already set, set the window. And it gives me all this information. I have the area under the curve probability that x is between 6 and 11. I have the low value here, which is 6, and the high value, the upper value, which is 11. This is very nice, very nice graph. All right, that's the normal distribution. The next distribution is on page 561, and it's the student t. It's the student t. Um, so turn to page 561, and we'll do uh, Examples 1, 2, and 3 here. The probability that t is less than negative 1, t is greater than 1.4, and t is between negative 2 and 3. And the t distribution we're working with is the t distribution with degrees of freedom equal to 15. All right, so now let's clear our calculator, clear our screen out, hit clear a couple of times, and we go through the same thing we'd go for before, press second stat plot, uh, press 4 to clear the plots out and enter. And then we would press the mode key and arrow over, arrow down, and over to 4 and press enter. And we can clear that and clear the whole screen again. And now what we'll do is we're going to find the probabilities without graphing of t less than negative 1. So we'll press second distribution. And we want to access the T distribution under the distribution menu. So let's arrow down to T CDF, which is option 5, and press Enter. And so what we want to enter here is that very small number, negative 1, second EE, 99, as our lower value, our lower bound. And we'll put in comma, negative 1. And then we'll put in a comma and the degrees of freedom. The T curve has a different curve for the T distribution has a different curve for every degrees of freedom. So we're, we're going to put in the degrees of freedom and we'll press enter. And we get the probability that T is less than negative 1 is 0.1666. All right, let's turn to page 562. And now what we'll do is we're going to find the probability that t is greater than 1.4 um, with, with graphing, drawing a picture. So let's clear the screen, and let's press second draw, all right, second draw, and press 1 for clear draw, and enter. All right, now let's set the window. I won't miss it this time. Press window. And let's set the window. We'll put negative 4, 4. Now the t distribution um, has a mean of 0. And so when we write x min and x max, we're saying that we're going to go 
uh, negative four units below the mean and four units above the mean, and that will give us a nice picture. We'll make uh, the tick marks on the x-axis one. We'll make x minimum negative 0.15, like it says, and we'll make y max 0.5. Remember, the area under the curve for t is also 1, so we wouldn't make y max any bigger than 1 anyway. And let's scale, let's put a tick mark 0.05 on the y-axis and we'll leave the resolution at 1. All right, now what we'll do is we'll press second distribution and we'll arrow over to draw. And now we're going to do t2. We're going to press 2 for shade t. 2, shade t. And what we have to enter is the lower bound of 1.4 and a comma. And we're going to enter 1 second EE, 99, that very large number. And then we're going to put comma and 15 for the degrees of freedom. And we'll press Enter. So it draws us a nice curve. It's going to draw a nice curve here. And it's going to shade to the right of one, t equals 1.4. All right, so go on to page, now that we've gotten this nice curve, to page 563, and we're going to try this, all right? There's no instructions, but it says try the following example. We'll try it together. All right, the first step is to press second draw. So press second draw and press 1 to clear the drawing, and then press the clear key. All right, now let's press the clear key to get rid of all the writing on the screen. Now, our lower bound for this is going to be negative 2, and our upper bound is going to be 3. So press second distribution, arrow over to draw, press 2 or arrow down to shade T. So I'll press 2. And now I need a lower bound, negative 2, comma, an upper bound, which is 3, a comma, and the degrees of freedom, which is 5. And I have my window set appropriately because this is the same T distribution. And press Enter. And we'll draw our chi-square curve. Or, I'm sorry, our student T curve. And it's still calculating. And so the area is quite large. It's 0.9635. Lower bound of negative 2, upper bound of 3, with degrees of freedom equal to 50. All right, so let's just do one more thing. Let's turn to page 564, and we will do the chi-square distribution. Um, there is a second video which does start with a chi-square distribution. I'm just going to do a little of it here, and you can um, view the second video to see the rest of the instructions we use in this course. All right, so we're on page 564. And we're going to do chi-square distribution. And so we'll, we'll do what we did before. I'm going to clear my screen out here. Uh, you would press on, turn the calculator on, do second stat plot. All right. Press uh, 4 to turn the plots off. Turn the plots off. Access second mode. Oh, sorry, second mode. Access mode. <laughs> There's no second mode. Getting in too much of a hurry here. Arrow over to 4, press Enter. All right. And now what you can do is um, press Second Distribution. Second Distribution. And we're going to arrow down to number 7 just so we can look at it. This is the chi square CDF. Press Enter for the chi square CDF. And so we'll do this first example the probability of chi square less than 8. So we need to put in that very large, very small number, negative 1. Negative is at the bottom of the screen in parentheses. Second EE, 99. And then put comma 8. And this is like the student T. Put comma 5. The degrees of freedom here for this example are 5. All right. And then just press Enter. And we get the chi-square probability of 0.84. 38.8438. All right. 
I'm going to do one more thing on this particular video. video. Remember, there is a second one. Um, this calculator does not do goodness of fit. And so I wrote a little program for goodness of fit. And so what I'm going to do is actually do that. And what I have to do is I have to go into my lists in STAT and put in some information. So let's do that now. Um, I'm going to clear the screen out. I'll press STAT. I'm going to do a goodness of fit program, a, a program I wrote that's put into the calculator that you would need to get. So press STAT and press 1 for edit. And what I'm going to do is arrow over to L1, arrow up, press clear. And I'm going to put in a set of data in L1. I'll put these numbers. I'm going to put 3, enter 5, enter 6, enter 4, enter 2, enter 6. All right, that's my observed values. And now let me arrow up to L2 and press clear. All right, and then press arrow down, press the arrow. And I'm going to put 5, comma 4, comma 5, comma 4, comma, I mean, sorry, enter 5, enter 4. All right, so I've got L1, my observed values, L2, my expected values. All right, now I'm going to do second quit. And then I'm going to press PRGM, the program key. PRGM, and I have this program, chi-square goodness of fit. And I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to press enter again. And what I get here are the degrees of freedom for this goodness of fit test the chi-squares test statistic, and the p-value for the, where well, I'm doing a hypothesis test here for goodness of fit. And now let's press enter. And I get a chi-square curve, but it's not very good because I didn't set the window. All right? I didn't set the window. So let me go back, and I'm going to hit second quit to get out of the program, and press clear, and I'm going to press window. And I'm just going to enter these values, 0. And I'm going to um, enter a 10 here. And I'm going to leave the rest of it, except I'm not going to go. I'm going to make y max 0.25. All right? Now, I'm going to press second quit and program again. And 1, enter. And I have the same results as I had before. Now I'm going to press enter again, and I should see a better graph. Yes, I do. Chi-square graphs, you start at 0 for x max, and you make the, uh, I'm sorry, you start at 0 for x min, and you make x max at least twice as big as the degrees of freedom. Sometimes you have to make it bigger. Anyway, that is that shaded region is the p-value that I would calculate to run this hypothesis test for goodness of fit. Well, this is the end of this calculator session. Uh, the, next, the second video is um, the rest of the calculator instructions, the, the rest of chi-square goodness of chi-square independence test, linear regression, and ANOVA, um, among other things. And uh, you can buy these videos in the bookstore, and I believe they're under $5. So they will also be shown on cable TV, so you need to look um, at the cable TV uh, syllabus for that instruction as to when they'll be shown. Anyway, this is Susan Dean, and these were the TI-83 calculator instructions from the beginning of the course through a little bit of chi-square. So good luck with the instructions. I hope you enjoy this great calculator.